So, Jeffrey, thank you for joining us. Good morning, Alex. Uh, uh, so, Jeffrey, there is. Uh... There is bad news in the country at the moment. A lot of people, we found out today that a lot of people are already in arrears with their energy bills. And a lot of people are wondering what help is coming their way. But the problem is that right now we have to wait until the 5th of September for decisions to be made. Isn't it perhaps a little, some might say, self-indulgent of the Conservative Party to be engaging in weeks and weeks of hustings when the country needs someone in charge right now to take those decisions? Well, the first thing to say is that actually a lot of the sort of gloom and doom is uh, predicated on the huge rises that are going to come in the winter. So I think it's the winter when people really start to have to use gas or electricity or whatever is where the real hardship is going to come. So from the uh, 5th of September onwards, we will have a new prime minister and that prime minister will have the benefit of all the work of the very intelligent uh, civil servants in the Treasury, who I know very well from my role as Deputy Ch Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, and they will be able to take action, I think, pretty quickly. And I think both of them would want to have a budget as soon as possible. The only other thing I would say is that actually to help people uh, be a little bit calmer about this is that actually if both Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak both pledged to serve the other's government if they were asked to do so, so that we would have a united team after the 5th of September. I think that would be a tremendous help. But, Sir Geoffrey, you are, you're right in saying that the real hardship and the, the real big price rises where people are going to be paying over £4,000 for their bills is coming in the new year after January. But at the moment, a survey came out today, 6 million homes in the UK right now owe an average of £206 to their supplier already. People need help right now. And Boris Johnson has said, perhaps rightly, that he can't start making policies because there's a new Prime Minister coming in a few weeks' time. But those few weeks, you know very well, Sir Geoffrey, that those few weeks can make a huge difference to households up and down the country. They need help right now. Well, I understand that. The problem is that we are in the middle of this campaign. Whether we like it or not, we're in the middle of it. It's part of the constitution of the Conservative Party, so it can't be changed. And I think what we've got to rely on is that civil servants are working on packages. Rishi Sumac, Liz Trust know perfectly well the hardship the British people are facing, and they will be doing their level best within what is affordable in this country to help as many people as possible. But, Sir Geoffrey, it's, it's Henry in the studio here. When you see the candidates at the hustings and their teams making these pledges, an average of about 2.6 or 2.7 pledges a day, uh, some of them getting increasingly ridiculous, like Rishi Sunak uh, threatening to prosecute people who don't like Britain, or Liz Truss saying, oh, I'm going to send all the Whitehall jobs from London out into the shires and uh, reduce people's pay and then having to walk those back. They're saying anything and everything to the Conservative Party faithful because they're desperate to get in. But a lot of these policies aren't worth the paper they're written on, written on, and we might as well just end this contest now because these pledges are ludicrous, many of them. Well, Henry, good morning. Nice to see you. Um, the thing is that, as you know and I know, during an election, people do tend to say things that don't necessarily uh, carry through when they're elected. So I, I think some of these policies are a bit of flim-flam. The problem is we cannot end this process now because it's in the Conservative Party constitution. And in any case, I've got a hosting tomorrow in Cheltenham. I think we want to give as much exposure as possible uh, to our members, to the two, two candidates, so that we end up getting the best possible one elected. So I understand the media pressure. I, I actually think it's wrong. I think you need to actually consider very carefully what you can afford. What is the package that's actually going to help those in most need uh, the most? And that, that, that is not entirely straightforward. And then come up with a policy and implement it. And we're in a pretty difficult economic situation at the moment. Let's not be in, under any illusion. Having spent £400 billion on the pandemic, having had the inflation caused by the war in the Ukraine, the room for manoeuvre of any chancellor is going to be limited. And uh, I think, you know, uh, people have got to realise that the government cannot help everybody in every situation. They will do the best they can, but there is going to be a certain amount of hardship this winter. And I'm afraid we've all got to get used to that, but we'll do what we can. 
So, Jeffrey, are, are you worried about the knock-on effect and the, the image issue that right now people are at home struggling, as we're hearing every day on this show, struggling, not knowing where they're going to find money to put food on the table, to keep a roof over their heads, and what they are seeing is the Conservative Party doing housekeeping. I appreciate that the process has started and you can't stop it. It's in the Conservative Party constitution of how you elect your leaders. But are you worried that this is going to reflect very badly on the Conservative Party, that in a time of national crisis, they're engaged in what some might call a little bit of navel-gazing? Well, as I say, if they pledge to work with each other after the 5th of September so that we get the very best possible help to the, those in need as soon as we can after the 5th of September, I think that would be a big start. And I think it's really important that when we do get a package, whatever that package is, that it's the right package that helps the most people in need. Not, I think, everybody, but those really in need who need help, who can't simply can't pay their bills, uh, then, then that is what we need to do. And I think at the moment we can't do any more in the middle of a, com a, a contest. And so, Geoffrey, who do you think is best placed to do that between uh, Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss? Well, I think you need to look at very carefully the both candidates' track record. Mm -hmm. Now, Rishi Sunak has been Chancellor of the Exchequer. He, he, I know from having talked to him in depth that he has his considerable brain round the entire economy. And it's going to be a very, very difficult job, whoever is prime minister. But I think that I would prefer somebody who actually really knows all the figures, really knows uh, how what we can afford and what we can't afford. And that is why I have declared uh, for Rishi Sunak. How concerned are you, Sir Geoffrey, that the very smart people in Whitehall, the so-called Treasury Mandarins, have had their morale destroyed by Liz Trunak, uh, sorry, Liz, <laughs> Liz Truss, who basically accuses them of being part of some kind of groupthink, and she essentially wants to blow the whole thing up? Well, look, Henry, I'm uh, Deputy Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee. I deal with these people on a twice-weekly basis, the top civil servants, all of them. And I know that many of them are of the highest quality we've got in the country. And we need to work with these people, the people with the best brains, with the most experience, to try and come up with a package. The country is in considerable difficulty at the moment to try and come up with a package to get us through what is undoubtedly one of the most difficult uh, economic crises we've had for a gener generation. OK, uh, so, Jeffrey, thank you so much for giving us all this time. I really appreciate it. That's Not at all. Good to see you, Alex, sis, but, and your panel. Thank but, you. Thank you. That's uh, Sir Jeffrey Clifton-Brown uh, speaking to us, a member of the 1922 committee.